Who are Queen? Hmm. Well, let's see. We have Roger Taylor, a very cool drummer, all the chicks loved. We have uh, John Deacon, the very smart, studious one who actually took care of the books for a while, I think. We have Brian May, the astrophysicist genius who built his own guitar. And then we have Freddie Mercury. I mean, what can you say? What can you say about that man? What can't you say about that man? He is a, uh, one of the greatest voices to ever enter into a rock band. And he was just an absolute one-off. There will never be another. There will never be another Freddie Mercury. My first Queen record that I really got into was the live album, Live Killers. And there's some amazing drumming on that record. The drum so the live drum solo for Keep Yourself Alive off Live Killers. I, if, if you listen to a Foo Fighters song called Rope, there's these three little drum breaks in the middle, and one of them is directly ripped off the Live Killers, uh, Keep Yourself Alive. So I would say go to Queen Live Killers and listen to Keep Yourself Alive, the drum solo. Which is amazing that they had a drum solo in their very first single. Hmm, first Queen track I learned to play. I would say that my first beat I ever learned to play was like, an, was another one bites the dust. So let's just say that that was the first Queen song I learned to play. Uh, the best Queen riffs. I love Dragon Attack. Keep yourself alive. I love Ogre Battle. It's late. If I had to introduce someone to Queen, God, it seems possible that nowadays you would have to introduce anyone to Queen, especially after the movie, but I think I would just start with that first greatest hits. And just say, here you are, this, this is the spectrum. There's opera, there's disco, there's vaudeville, ragtime, there's everything. I mean, I, I think that, you know, they definitely took their cue from the Beatles and said, you know, we're not gonna just be a one sounding band. I think Queen's greatest live performance and maybe the greatest live performance if not the top five greatest live performance of all time is Live Aid. You know, Queen were known for all their lights and all that sort of business, you know, and, and their show and all that stuff. And they literally had none of that. They literally had to get up on stage and just be a band and just play their music as a band with nothing else, with no help. And they still kicked everybody's butt. I mean, they kicked everyone's butt that day. And they, everyone knows that that's the greatest performance from Live Aid. And everybody also knows that it's kind of one of the greatest performance, live performances ever. And it, it's a band playing tight, doing what they do best, Roger and Brian and John Deacon just being a great band, but it's Freddie Mercury's show. And that's just him just showing everyone how to be the most ingratiating, gregarious, come one, come all front man. Favorite Queen tracks. I love In the Lap of the Gods, the, the second version on um, Sheer Heart Attack. I love Liar off Queen One. I love Tenement Funster off Sheer Heart Attack, which is a Roger Taylor song. I love Bicycle Race just because it's insane, but it's amazing. I love Play the Game. I love 39, Brian May singing. I love Under Pressure which is Queen and David Bowie together. How can you go wrong? I keep trying to get the guys to learn other ones. I really want to learn Radio Gaga. I really wanted to learn that for the Reading Festival because I thought it would have been amazing. Probably not even really one of my favorite Queen songs, but I just thought it would have been really fun to sing that at Reading Festival and everyone would get their hands going and do that. Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, that's kind of the first song I really remember hearing as a kid. And I just thought it was funny. 
you know, I was like maybe four or five when it came out. It was 1976, 77. So I was a child, and I remember being in my parents' car, my dad's car, and me and my little, or me and my older sister, um, laughing. And every time the "Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia," we just thought that was really funny. It's a mini opera. It starts out as this beautiful ballad about killing a man. Um, it's been said that it's about Freddie coming to terms with his sexuality. Um, I don't know. I've heard that before. Freddie never said that, but I've heard, I think Brian May said that on an interview. I, I think he just kind of read into it a little bit, which might be true. Um, so there's a sadness, and, and then there's this crazy cod opera section. That took a lot of work <laughs> to do. I mean, super highly musically skilled. But the, but the thing about Queen is none of them went to music school. Everyone imagines they're, you know, Freddie was some classically trained pianist and, and all that. They didn't, none, none of them went to music school. They're just a garage rock band, essentially. Just like the Foo Fighters, you know, they're just, just a bunch of kids that were in garages. And then there's the hard rock section, we all know, and, um, which is heavy. Heavy. Queen could be really heavy, you know, like they could rock just as hard as Zeppelin or Deep Purple when they wanted to. They really could. Um, and then it ends like the beginning, a bit of a ballad -y thing. And then, of course, there's a gong at the end, just to make sure everyone knows it was the 70s. If you liked watching that video, you can click here to subscribe for more. Radio X.